She got me. She got you? She got me. Oh my gosh, she's definitely, I tell you what, I tell people all the time my most painful bite that I ever had was actually a adult blackhead, bigger than this one, quite a bit bigger, on my bicep. And it didn't let go for about five minutes. Uh, how long has this one been on you? Uh, I would say about three minutes now. About three minutes. So there's only one or two choices. I can either pry it off, it's going to hurt, or we'll try to get mouthwash and see if we can't get uh, a little bit of that. Well, I mean, I'm not going to say no to the mouthwash. You want to try the mouthwash? So guys, seriously, the little bit of alcohol that's in mouthwash, and I'm just taking my time explaining this, uh, actually will cause the snake to let go. It doesn't hurt. You know, we put mouthwash in our mouth and stuff like that. So you can watch how good this works right now. I'm just going to barely put just a little teeny bit of this on, just barely a little bit. Should I unwrap her so she doesn't nope, come nope. back and bite me again? And it didn't work. Oh, I know. She's, she's loosening a little bit. I'm gonna put just a little bit more. First snake bite into you. Oh wow! Oh, she's losing it. I'm gonna try to get her off before she. Uh, she's gonna tighten back up. Re grabs. Mike, how's it going? Is it working? I don't think she wants to let go. I know you. All right, so we're gonna have to do it the old school way. All right. I don't know. Ow. I can help you. Do you want me to help you or just want to wait it yeah, out? Yeah, I guess you're the pro, right? Okay, watch. This is easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take her bottom jaw. Oh, like this. she's so tight right now. I know, she's gonna dig in a little bit. Oh, too late. But oh! I'm gonna unpry her jaw a little bit. Just don't don't move too much, don't move too much. I'm not trying to. Oh. Now get your finger up. Oh. Look, she's trying to bite you now. She will try oh, to bite you. I don't care if she bites me. That one hurt, I'm not gonna lie. And that's how you do it. That's old school style there. She was very, very interested in you. I got sweet taste in blood. Good job, Mike. Way to go, how's it feel? Um, Does it hurt when you push on it? <laughs> <laughs> Good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. We have a little project going today. You guys know that Ivy and Ariana and Jazz's enclosure are kind of the centerpiece for 2.0 and really one of the centerpieces for the entire Reptarium. And we've always just loved this enclosure from the day it arrived. I was like, oh my gosh, this enclosure is great. But I'm going to be totally honest with you here. And the fact is, is that it's always been a little bit bare, right? And we tried to decorate it a couple times. And you got to remember that anacondas are giant snakes. I mean, Ivy's a hundred and something pounds and she kind of just crushes everything. So every time we tried to kind of, you know, fixture it out and put a bunch of foliage in here, she's kind of ruined it. Well, Jessica actually ordered some new foliage that she feels is going to go really good. And you guys know Jessica's a genius when it comes to designing enclosures like this. So of course, we're going to give it one more go. We're going to just let Jessica have a go at it and just fixture out this entire enclosure to make it look incredible. Because again, it's awesome when you walk in and you see this enclosure with the waterfall, the snakes and all this stuff. But you know, the foliage is going to make this thing really, really pop. So I'm excited to see what Jessica does. So I'm going to kind of just turn it over to her, let her do her magic, and we'll come back and check on her later and see how it goes. We are revamping Ivy's enclosure. We needed it for a while. So with like larger snakes and stuff, like the fake plants don't hold up the greatest. So you have to revamp it every once in a while. It's kind of fun. But I've got some new plants, some sturdier stuff, and some other things to like go up in the corners so maybe they can't get to it as easily and destroy it. But yeah, let's get started. crazy how curious these anacondas are, man. Like, I've never seen a snake, like, as soon as I put this in here, I'm like, what is this? This is new. <laughs> Like, I must investigate it. Jessica's right. Ever since I've been working with the anacondas, it's been amazing how curious they are. Like no other snake I've ever worked with. As soon as you go in the enclosure, they want to come over and investigate and figure out what's going on. Not from a mean standpoint. They're not afraid of us. We're not afraid of them. It's they're just curious, which makes it really interesting, right? And as she's putting all this new kind of foliage in here, they're investigating that as well, which I think is great enrichment for the animals. All right, so I pretty much have everything it kind of like where I want it in here. So now it's time to start drilling and putting everything in place to make sure they can't knock it off or, you know, down or whatever. You can already see she's already up in this plant trying to pull it down, so. <laughs> We're all done. 
we'll see how long the plants last in here. And uh, as soon as we see Ryan, we'll see what he thinks about it. Holy cow, does this look amazing. And look at Ariana. She is just all over the place loving it. And that's the thing that I think is really interesting is the enrichment that comes from this type of thing. I think it looks great. It really makes this entire enclosure pop now and look amazing. You know what's really cool too? As you remember that yesterday, the anacons were breeding. Well, look at, they are locked up totally right now. And I've never really seen anacondas breed underwater like this. What's interesting is Jazz will be underwater breeding and then he comes up for a breath of air every now and then and then goes back down and breeding. The entire time that Jessica was doing Doing this enclosure which was at least an hour they stayed hooked up they never even cared they just were locked up so definitely a lot of breeding when it comes to this but oh my goodness this enclosure looks so amazing again I always love this as a showpiece but now that Jessica has it like this it's a completely different environment it looks so cool I love it to death so let me know in the comments what you guys think like I said I think it's over the moon happy and again you know it's an idea for you guys that are having animals at home is every now and then to switch the enclosure up is a lot of enrichment for your animals right because it's new smells it's new things for them to look at and stuff like that now we'll have to see how they actually act over the next month or so will they rip it apart or we'll have to change some things around but in the meantime Jessica just absolutely knocked it out of the park I couldn't be more happy well Gemma shed out and blew her cage up as always got a little bit of stuck shed on her and that's what happens unfortunately when you're in a northern climate with uh, the heat's on a lot even when you're trying to spray them down every day they still sometimes don't shed as good and big snakes like Gemma oftentimes don't shed in one piece anyways but the, regardless I I don't really know what's happening. I know a lot of you guys have been like, what's going on with Gemma? She swelled up, she looked grab it, looked like an ovulation, she went through a pre-lay shed, then she went into another shed, and now I'm like 99% sure she is not grab it. I don't think she's gonna lay slugs, I don't think she's gonna lay eggs. I think what basically happened is what they call a reabsorption. Basically, they go through almost like a false pregnancy where they go through ovulation, they get ready to go, and then all of a sudden they just suck the eggs up. It happens every now and then with ball pythons. Never seen it happen with retics, but I'm almost 99% sure that's what's going on here because obviously she does not look gravid anymore so now that we get her cleaned up and stuff like that give her a couple days I'm gonna to try to feed her and hopefully she'll go back onto food and we can start beefing her up but uh oh, I'm so bummed it looks like we're not gonna get any eggs from Gemma this year um, don't know if I'll breed her next year but uh, nevertheless I hope she goes back onto food now after being off food for like four months no prego that we know of no prego me a go we got to get her out get her in a little bath I'm basically just his coach I'm, I'm a snake trainer uh, you're doing a great job Thank grab her with the upper half slowly work that back I'm down still, yeah, yeah I'm still trying to be gentle I mean we don't think she's pregnant but in case that you know eggs pop out I'd rather be, be eggs and not yolks making them scrambled eggs yolks. you know making bad jokes all morning about them gourds I never realized that <laughs> Over easy eggs, and then there's ovaries are also eggs. <laughs> no, that's over easy. You guys know that I always have a bunch of crazy ideas, but there's been this one idea that I finally want to share with you that uh, uh, I've had in my mind for a couple years. And, and you know, I don't know if you guys follow like gamers and stuff like that. There's obviously like the FaZe Clan, there's Cloud House, there's TikTok House. There's all these houses that basically are where people c congregate to like collaborate and to kind of grow their followings and stuff like that. I've thought the same thing in the animal world. I wouldn't mind doing a house, say in Florida, because there's so much stuff going down down there that would be called like the conservation house where you know we basically get a house where anyone can come and stay and collaborate with one another you know if you want to you know just hang out for the week and you are a content creator you have a conservation project you have something like that a place where everyone could go I mean what do you think about that I mean you know could we somehow figure a way to to get some really cool house that everyone could stay at and again it wouldn't be like you know permanent residency but let's say someone was flying in from another country or maybe someone from California was going to Florida and they need a place to stay they could stay at the conservation house and then they could actually collaborate with other creators that were staying at the conservation house too and a lot of it really brought it to mind like with the croc fest thing because not only were so many people coming in for croc fest but in particular there were some people from jamaica that were crocodile conservationists you know it'd be great for them to have a place to stay not only to stay but also stay around other people that would then create content with them that would get their cause out you know i don't know what you guys think about that like i said we've seen it in other genres like fashion 
even TikTok, gaming, all kinds of other stuff. But we haven't seen something like this in the animal world, right? And I'm all about like, you know, all ships rise with the tide, right? So if we get people together, yeah, we're gonna grow all of our channels, we're gonna grow all of our reach, and we're gonna be able to really get, you know, our message out. Again, if it's about conservation, which I certainly wanna work more and more with in the future, it'd be a great opportunity to have a house where everyone could go. So let me know in the comments, number one, what you think about this project. Number two, how do you think we can actually get it done? You know what I mean? How can we, do we just rent like a six bedroom house for a year down in Florida? Do we buy something? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think because it's just something I think could be really good, not only for the education, but also the conservation of animals around the world. What do you say we see if Drogo likes butternut squash? I've fed him squash before, but I don't know if he'll like this. Do you want a Drogo? What do you think, bud? I think he likes it. Oh yeah, he loves it. It's just one more thing that we can feed him. Again, there's all kinds of different types of squash, right? So uh, it looks like he really is enjoying this one. So I've got a handful of pieces for him and look at him, he is immediately like, yes. You can always tell with Drogo because he'll taste something really quick. And if he doesn't like it, he just spits it out. Uh, this one, he just immediately gets his little claw in there and is like, yes, I want it. So that is amazing. Again, lots of variety for these animals is so important. So we're always trying to look for not only things that are gonna kind of vary his diet, but also things that we can maybe use to kind of lure him out because we've been trying to train him lately to as soon as we come in the enclosure for him to climb out of his actual bunk so that we can have encounters and stuff like that so I think butternut squash may actually be another one that he's gonna like a whole lot there you go bud oh, there you go sweetheart oh my god what a cutie Mike got Gemma all cleaned up let's uh, get her back in like I said I have no idea what's going on with this girl definitely there's no doubt there's no eggs in there I mean you can see she went from like super fat to kind of skinny so I just hope she eats now so yeah. just uh, get the little bit of shed off of her and, and uh, she should look she looks beautiful I mean she's just an absolutely gorgeous animal but uh what a roller coaster ride right I mean we didn't know she was gravid then we thought she was gravid an ultrasound she was gravid shed shed again now here the third shed so I don't know I think we just missed it and I'm not exactly sure why because we certainly saw night fairy lock up with her a handful of times I'm not really sure but she's back to being her sweetheart self and hopefully here in the next couple days we'll offer her food and she'll eat and uh, go from there come on gems she's like I don't want a piece of water I know now she's like I like this water this is good and not handling her for you know those couple months yeah it, she feels like she's gotten a lot every <laughs> yeah well just wait till she starts eating now that she probably is done with all this garbage she'll probably start eating like a monster oh, she's gonna get big because when we got her remember she was so much fatter she was like because she had been eating eating a lot before we got her and uh wow yeah she's gonna get big after this that's for sure wow what a cool snake so uh she's all set and uh we are good to go and we'll feed her in a couple days hope you guys enjoyed today's video thank you so much for watching it means the world to me if you enjoyed the video do me a favor there's a playlist right here you can watch some more if you don't mind could you do me one more favor hit that subscription button it would mean the world to me thank you guys so much have an absolutely wonderful day reptile army remember be kind to someone and i promise i'll see you in the next one